What's up everybody? Welcome back to 30 to Life. So this video right here is a continuous video from my last video, Samoans in San Quentin prison. If you haven't got a chance to check that out, I'll put it up right here. Go check that one out first. That way you can catch up to speed what we talking about today. Anyways, a lot of y'all been asking me to get into a little bit more detail on the program that I was introduced to there. I had only did time at CYA. It was a little different. It was a lot different uh, from prison. But, uh, you know, I think that everybody's experience with prison is going to be different, of course. Um, for me, being a lifer at the time, I had 30 years to life, second degree murder. Uh, I have level four points, so I'm going to be going to a level four yard, a level four prison. And, you know, at this time during these years, most of the level four prisons were war zones. It was on and cracking and everyone can get it. It didn't matter what race, what car you were in. We was at constant war. So the purpose of the program in San Quentin was to get you ready for these type of prisons. So with my peoples, when I got there, when they pulled me to the side, they started lacing me up on how we were supposed to conduct ourselves, you know, in prison. Being from the streets, a lot of people that were my age, that were young, it, it's hard to break, you know, the street mentality. So it was good that, you know, we had a, our own program there in San Quentin because a lot of the Usos that come into prison, they come in, you know, and like I said before, they, they, they're caught up in gangs, they're caught up in that street stuff, and they don't really know, you know, what it's like to be with their own people in the penitentiary. Because... California prisons operate, you know, with race and gangs. So there's a lot of politics involved, a lot of rules involved. And, you know, so that old street mentality needs to be broken. So small things that you do or say, you might not think it's, it's anything, but it's everything to people in there. I did a video about if, if Islanders, if Samoans and Asians should use the N word. OK, this was an issue in prison amongst our peoples. Uh, a lot of the older Usos that have been doing time since the 80s, you know, in there, they don't fuck with that word because in prison, you know, that word is a disrespectful word to the brothers in there. So, you know, there's a lot of older blacks that are in prison that do not like that word at all. And you say that word around motherfuckers like that and you're liable of kicking a motherfucking race riot off. So, you know, you're endangering your people, you're endangering everybody else because you are using a word that, that is highly disrespectful to a certain race in the penitentiary. So things like that, that might've seemed small to you was major in there. So one of the issues amongst a lot of us young polys in there is we like to keep our hair long and we like to braid our shit. Well, you ain't gonna like this, but the rules when we hit level four was we couldn't braid our hair. The only braids we were allowed to put in our hair were whips. So you got the two whips and that's it. You know, you saw my video when I got out of prison, I just kept the two whips. But at first, when I first hit prison, I like to get my hair braided, you know, in all kinds of ways, because that's how I've been doing it on the streets. And uh, that was an issue. And that was an issue that the homies in there, they don't, they don't fuck with, you know, they don't like that shit. The reason behind that is that, you know, and this is a true story because this happened in high desert. One of the Usos had his hair braided and he was on the tier and the Southsiders and blacks were at war with each other. So Southside ain't going to take the time to determine if you black or if you Samoan, Tongan or whatever. OK, so they didn't take the time to find out and they came out and they stabbed this Uso up on the tier. So that was one of the main reasons why we kicked off in, in high desert, you know, with with the Southsiders. But, you know, it was small rules like that that you thought weren't important that you had to be laced up on. And I was getting laced up on a lot of that shit. Uh, the program also consisted of mandatory workouts, mandatory yard. There was no excuses. You had to go to yard. I don't care if you were sick. I don't give a fuck if your, your, your arm broke, your leg broke, whatever. You got to come to the yard. 
you got to make your appearance, you know what I mean? And, and, and if you don't, then, you know, there's going to be some homies to holler at you. But uh, once you're on the yard, basically what we would do is we would come together and we would discuss whatever issues might be within the car. Um, if there's any other issues with other cars, other races, whatever, that was all put on the table and we went from there with every issue. After all that was taken care of, then we would work out together. The only ones that ain't working out would be like the three or four Usos that are keeping point, posting security for us, you know. Their job was basically to make sure nobody runs up on us, make sure nobody crosses the line in between us or anything like that. So they'll, they'll be the only ones that are posted up watching the yard and not working out. The rest of us, we gotta work out together. It's mandatory, um, there's no excuses. So when you're working out, you know, you got to follow the instructions of whoever's running the workouts. As we're working out, whether it's burpees or whatever, you know, we all got to sound off in unison together. Um, that shows unity. It shows, it shows strength. So basically, for example, you know, we're doing burpees. We're doing one, two, three. Everybody is going to sound off together. It's just like the military, you know what I mean? And the purpose of that is to get your body ready. To, to always stay ready because you never know when it's going to pop off. So you want to get your body ready. You want to get your mentality ready and you want to show unity, you know, on the yard. So we would do that. That was mandatory every day. Um, any movements you do, I don't care if we're going to the bathroom, I, this is on the yard. So if we go, we got to go use the toilet. If you got to do your business out there on the yard, whether you got to take a shit or take a piss or whatever, you know, you're going to have the homies, they're going to post up while you're using the toilet to make sure you safe. And that's how it was there. Always constantly posting up security, always constantly walking in pairs. You know, we are always on high alert. When you hit those level four yards, it's war zones. So you, you're always on high alert. You always gotta be ready because motherfuckers get did up real quick. So that was part of the program there. For me, you know, like I told you guys before, I wasn't hip to a lot of shit, like as far as my culture and my language goes. So I basically had to school, go to school, you know. I had to hang out with the older Usos so that they can teach me the language or at least some of the language that we used in, per in prison. Um, they had to teach me about our culture. They had to teach me a lot about the pride and everything within our culture. And that was part of my program. Once you understand that, that we're a unit and that we're all together. So if, if, if anything cracks off, if somebody gets jumped, we all jumping. There's, there's no like, oh, I couldn't get there or, or nah, there was too many people in the way. There's no excuses, man. If, if one of our folks jump, we jumping. All of us is jumping. That's just how it goes. You know what I mean? And we had to be ready. And so like in my situation, you know, I, I went to high desert state prison and that was a war zone for our people so you know what i mean like we were at war with the south side there in, in high desert for years so i didn't know nothing about the war or anything like that but i'm automatically thrown into the war so that was my program the whole time in san quentin until i left i constantly had to program in this manner when i got to high desert i already was on high alert and understood what was happening it was me Another Samoan homie, Oli, from, uh, from, from San Jose. It was uh, Tadao from East Palo Alto. That was the Tongan homie. And uh, there was a couple Asian homies that were, that were on the bus. When we got off the bus at High Desert, the COs, they were like, hey, you, what are you guys? We told them, Samoan, you know, Tongan. You know, he, the sergeant was tripping. He was just like, man, we never got this many Islanders off the bus before. So they automatically took us and put us in another cell. And then they took the Southsiders and put them in another cell. But everybody else went to the bullpen together. You know what I mean? So I already knew what time it was when we got, when we got to High Desert. It was automatically on. The Southsiders, they knew what time it was. So if they mistakenly crack our cells together, we was having to get off. And that was without even talking to our people on the main line yet. You see what I'm saying? So you always had to be ready and understood what was fun, what was happening within the car and, 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 and make sure that we were, you know, on point at all times. So that's basically how it was. So I hope this, uh, 
enlighten y'all a little bit and you got to learn a little bit more about how we functioned in there. Um, but yeah, so you know what it is. Stay the fuck out of trouble.